and welcome to this SUP Border comparison review of the Aquamarina Coral Boards. Aquamarina have two of their boards in that coral range. It is the 10 feet 2 all round and the 11 foot 6 touring board. The brand has definitely aimed these boards at the female rider or that lighter weight paddler, especially with a match color scheme. So if you are looking for one of these boards, listen in to the whole review so you can decide if these are going to be right for you. If you're new here to SUP Water Reviews, hello, welcome, and hello again if you have tuned into these reviews before. Happy to have you back. Just to give you a little bit of information of what we're going to be going through today, we're going to be giving you the specifications of each of these boards. We're going to be looking at the fittings, the deflection test. We're going to be getting both of the boards on the water, seeing how they compare against each other, and of course, who each board is going to suit. We're going to be looking at the pros, cons, value for money as well at the end. Starting off, if you don't know about Aquamarina, they are based in China and they have a really wide range of boards to suit a number of different paddlers. Their brand mission is to get you out on the water exploring, hence their motto, wonder is all around. Let's jump into the specifications of each board we have here today, starting off with the all-round ice up. This board is 10 feet, 2 inches long, 31 inches wide, and 4.7 inches thick. It comes in at 230 liters of volume and weighs 8.2 kilograms or 18 pounds. Aquamarina states a load capacity is up to 105 kilograms with a recommended PSI of 15. It retails for 519 British pounds or 550 euros, but we have seen cheaper deals online too. Switching over to the Touring board in the Coral range. Now this Touring board is 11 feet 6 inches in length, 31 inches wide, six inches thick, totals 328 liters of volume and weighs in just under 10 kilograms at 9.6 kilos or around 21 pounds. Aquamarina states a load capacity on the touring board is up to 130 kilograms with that recommended PSI of 15 as well. It retails for 599 pounds or 649 euros. The coral range features Aquamarina's drop stitch light technology construction which does drop the weight of the product. There's a drop stitch core, a single layer around and multiple rail bands offer reinforcement. As part of the purchase you get quite a few accessories in the package. There's the bag, paddle, pump, leash, fin, carry strap and of course the board. Most accessories are the same across each board and we'll explain the differences now. The bag you get with purchase, it's actually quite nice and feels comfortable on your back. I think this has to do with the lighter weight of the board as well with the construction they have used. It opens up fully to fit the gear in and has a good amount of handles for transporting. There's an inner sleeve pocket as well for storage of the fins, leash and pump hose. Taking a look at the paddle, now it is a basic aluminium shaft with a plastic blade. The blade has a massive scoop and it feels as though you don't get the reach expected from a paddle when paddling. It weighs just over a kilogram as well, which is pretty heavy, but for the price, it would reflect you getting a paddle like this. The clamps are tight and that does stop the spinning of the handle, which is a great thing. Taking a look at the pump, it is a GRI double action pump branded up with Aquamarina. Now the double action means you can switch the dial on the pump to number two, to use both the upstroke and downstroke to inflate. And then when the pumping gets tough, switch that dial to number one and you just have that downstroke for inflation, which makes it a little bit easier. GRI are a top pump manufacturer, so it's nice to see you're getting a good pump with purchase. You also get a good branded leash with the package. Now, the leashes do differ between the boards. You'll notice on the smaller 10 feet two all round, you get the straight leash. And then for the touring, you get a coiled leash. Both leashes, seem to be really nice in the water. The fins are the same across both boards, a touring style fin, which is color coded and uses that click in system with the tab. It's got quite a large area on the fin as well and that does help with the stability. You'll notice you also get a carry strap in the package just to secure the board, or you can even carry the board without the backpack too. Jumping into the fittings that we have on the board today, we have the 10 foot two coral all round board in front of me here. So we're gonna start with this one. Starting up at the nose, we'll notice we have those bungee straps. Let's take a look at the deck pad. Now this is a crocodile textured diamond groove deck pad. Quite grippy, really nice to stand on, really nice when you're stepping around the board as well. 
at the tail of the board of that deck pad, we do have a little kicker as well. So it's nice to know that when you do step back, you can really feel where your feet are. The handle in the middle, it's nice and comfortable. It's not too big and it's not too bulky. It is well centered as well, which is always a great thing when you are carrying your board. We have these D-ring attachments here. Now you can attach a kayak seat to these boards. You can also attach them all bungees. Behind that tail pad, we have the valve point and also the leashing D-ring behind that. Flipping the board over, looking at that fin box, we have just that center slide in, click in fin with that tab and the rest of the board is clean from any fittings. Stepping over and taking a look at the touring board that we have behind me, checking at the fittings on that and how it differs from the all round board. We'll notice we have a much larger bungee area up at the front for storage. That really makes this board stand out as that touring design as you can carry more gear. Back from that again, we have the same handle, very comfortable and well weighted when you are carrying. The deck pad, like we said before, it's the same on the Tan 2 all round board, that crocodile skin diamond groove deck pad with a kicker at the back as well. We also have a bungee system behind and you do get the bungees included with the purchase of the touring board. So that's a really great option for storing gear both in front and behind you. Behind that kicker on the tail pad, we have the valve point and the leashing D-ring. Then flipping the board over underneath, we do have a tail runner on the 11.6 touring board. That just helps with water release. And we also have the same fin box with the same fin on this board as well. So quite a few differences there between the boards and they really do aim themselves toward different styles of paddling, which we're gonna get into once we get on the water and toward the end of this comparison review. But we're gonna get into the deflection test before we move any further. Now I wanna highlight the key difference between both of these boards and that is the thickness. So the all round uh, ice up from Aquamarina, the 10 feet two, is only 4.7 inches thick compared to the touring board, which is six inches thick. So it's gonna be a little bit of a difference in the deflection test, just because the board is thinner. But let's take a dive into it now and explain each. So looking at our deflection test, we do have a 1.5 meter gap in the middle of the board. We place a 75 kilogram weight on top. We see how far the board bends. The 10 foot two all round coral, that deflected at 22 millimeters. And for a 4.7 inch thick board, that is actually pretty good. Considering that we have boards that range from that 16 to 18 up to about 30 millimeters in their deflection. So you are getting quite good performance from this thinner and smaller board. But then moving into the touring board, the 11.6 Coral, we see that that deflected only at 14 millimeters. That's just down to that added thickness of that six inches. It just gives it a little bit more rigidity, a bit more stiffness, so that a heavier rider or carry more gear will be useful on that board. All right, let's get both of these boards out on the water, compare them to see which one is gonna be best for you. Now we're gonna start off with the touring board. We have reviewed this board before, so if you are considering purchasing that, I definitely recommend taking a look at that review. We're gonna put a card up in one of the corners here, so you can click on that. It's gonna give you a little bit more added information before you make your purchase. Now the touring board, it's 11 feet, six inches long, which helps to turn and maneuver the board. Now what I mean by that is a lot of touring boards are usually over 12 feet, which can make it a little bit harder to turn, especially if you're that lighter weight or smaller rider. The lightweight construction as well makes the board feel lively on the water. And this will be even more exaggerated with those lighter riders. You can see that the board turns on the spot when doing a step back turn and with speed. However, I'm going to say that the shorter length does hinder the speed just a little bit. It's not an issue if you are using this board for that cruisy adventure, but if you are thinking of taking this board on longer touring expeditions, you'd maybe opt for a longer board in the Aquamarina range. Just to give you that added glide, added speed when you are paddling over a longer distance. The board felt great underfoot with the stiffness as well on the touring board. There is a slight nose lift, but it feels and looks flat in the water, which gives you good glide and minimizes drag as well. We did have a little bit of wind when we were testing the touring board. And with that six inches of thickness and feeling high above the water, plus having all of the kit on the board and the board being lightweight, it did feel like I was being affected by the wind quite a bit. I did have to keep paddling 
on one side to stay in a straight line. So just do keep in mind the types of conditions you'll be riding it in, but the fin does help with tracking as it has quite a large area. Now I'll bring it back into the review and I just wanted to highlight the width of these boards. They're both 31 inches, which is a really nice width for the female, the lighter weight riders when they are paddling. We'll notice that we have clips of my wife uh, and also one of her friends paddling these boards. 31 inches just makes it that little bit uh, narrower, a bit easier to reach the paddle around than when you are paddling on a 32 or a 33 inch wide board. Most of those boards out there that are in this price range or are aiming toward the female or lighter riders are around 32 inches. So it's great to see that Aquamarina have thought about just bringing in the width a little bit just to enhance your paddling experience. Now switching over to the 10 foot two all round coral board, I'm going to start off by just mentioning the difference in thickness again. We've said that this board is 4.7 inches thick. This touring board is six inches thick. What are the differences in that? Why is that going to change the way I paddle or how it feels on the water? Well, firstly, on a thinner board, you're going to be lower to the water, which gives you a lower center of gravity and it's gonna enhance your stability and balance when you are paddling. However, the first thing you'll notice is that myself, I weigh in at 85 kilograms, I'm five feet, 10 inches tall. I am just at the upper limits of this board for its weight range. You'll notice that I'm quite low in the water. The water's almost lapping up over the board. So definitely recommend that if you are riding a 4.7 inch thick board, that you are in that weight range of say 75 to 80 kilograms maximum. Uh, if you are over that, maybe think of getting a board that's going to have a little bit more materials just to enhance that stiffness because this board is just definitely suited to those lighter weight riders. When we put these boards together on screen, you can definitely see that difference I was speaking about, how I'm low in the water on the all round shape. Turning the board had no issues. That deck pad is really grippy. Stepping back, doing a step back turn, it came around nice and fast. Now stability wise, 31 inches wide, you have quite a wide outline on the 10 foot two as well. You have a wide nose, a fairly wide tail. So as it holds its width, you're getting a lot more board that sits on the water, which gives you more balance. Before we get into looking at who these boards are going to suit, and you've probably got a bit of an idea from the video already, we're going to just jump into the cons of each board because that will reflect in who they're going to suit a little bit. Now for both of the boards, I'm gonna say that you could be getting a better paddle with the package. For over 500 British pounds or, you know, 550 up to that 650 euro mark. There are some other brands that are at a cheaper price and point that do have a better paddle included. So it would be nice to see that paddle upgraded. It is quite a heavy paddle, but again, if you are just getting into this sport, there's really no need to have an upgraded paddle just yet. It's gonna be great to get you out on the water, paddling around, having fun, especially if you are going to be on the all round ice up. Switching over to the touring board and just really as a touring board it is marketed as that ex exploration board it'd be nice to have some handles on the board up the front or at the back just so it's easy maneuvering when you are in the shallow waters and again i'll just mention that we did have a little bit of wind when we were testing which was nice because it means we get out in all different types of conditions but you will be affected by the wind if you are on this board and as a lighter rider it can be difficult to turn the board as you are high above the water on the six inch thick touring board. Lastly, one of the cons, and this is something we highlight in all of our reviews, is the environmental credibility of the brand. Everything comes wrapped in plastic from Aquamarina. So if you are conscious about buying eco-friendly, do maybe have a look elsewhere at other brands who are doing better things for the environment. It's great that Aquamarina want you to get out there and explore get out you know, and see all the wonder that the world has. But it'll be nice to tie that back into some environmental credibility. And I know it's hard to change a whole factory, factory's process in doing that. And we'll have more information coming about that on more SUP border videos very soon. But it'll be great to see them start changing it up just to maybe align themselves better with their mission. So stepping into the value for money then, looking at that you know, mid 500 pounds, 
up to 650 euros for the touring board. I think you are getting a pretty good package for that amount of money. You're getting a great pump, you're getting nice fin, good leashes with the board. We said that that paddle could be upgraded, but it does fit in fairly well with that price point. And the boards, they are finished off really well. I'm not seeing any of the of the seams or anything coming undone. We've had this touring board, like I've said, we reviewed it before. We've probably had it for a good six, eight months now, and there's no signs of wear or tear on it at all. We've been using it quite a bit as well. So they are holding up really well. Great value for money from Aqua Marina, and they're gonna get you out on the water enjoying your local waterways. So who are these boards going to suit? It's crunch time. Let's get into that comparison component of our reviews. Starting off with the all round 10 foot two coral. It's definitely suited to people who just wanna cruise around their local waterways, get out not too close, not too far from shore, maybe get the kids involved and stand up paddling. Just having a board that can offer you great stability and great fun for riders under 80 kilograms. And that's key, just making sure that you're under that 80, 75 kilogram mark, you'd be hitting the sweet spot on this board. Maneuverable, stable, you get some great glide when you are that lighter rider, and you have the option to carry some gear if you were to go a little bit further, but then you'd want to probably upgrade to the touring board, which we'll mention now. So this touring board is probably great for riders up to about 90 kilograms in weight, plus even taking some extra gear as well on the front and the back. They say the recommended low weight's up to 130 kilograms, so you have that option to carry some extra gear. This board, the touring board, I'd really suggest that you have maybe a little bit of experience, but even if you are coming into the sport as a brand new paddler, you could get the touring board if you were under that 70 kilogram mark or 75 kilogram mark. And it'd be great because it opens up a lot of potential for you to go into different disciplines of stand up paddling. The all round board, it's great. You can jump in the waves if you wanted to, but the touring board really lends itself to getting out in a bit more open ocean style, maybe a bit more bumpy water conditions, longer touring adventures so you can explore around the next headland and still have a board that's gonna be a little bit longer, it's gonna have better glide so it's gonna get you there faster, rather than having something that's going to be a little bit slower in the water such as the all round ice up. We hope that this comparison review of the Aqua Marina Corals gives you a better understanding and insights into if these boards are going to be right for you. Remember, please do like, subscribe to these videos. You'll get a lot of updates on the future videos that are coming out from Suckwater as well. And do head to our website and do click the link below in the description below because we have a lot more information on the website about these boards. We have scale ratings, we have write-ups of the board, we have more photos. And of course we have added information as well that might be interest to you if you are going to purchase one of these boards. We really wanna thank you very much for tuning in. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. We'll happily answer them for you. See you again on another Supporter Comparison Review.